government makes 15-month plan. Joseph Stahl on mission station neglected by successive governments. And hunters recruits hopeful to secure final spot. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Monday's news. The Prime Minister announced his new cabinet yesterday afternoon with major emphasis on reforming all sectors. Bougainville remains one of PNG's greatest challenges and so is now looked after by the Prime Minister himself. Other notable sectors that the PM emphasised reformations include the forestry, public service and the justice sector. Following the swearing-in of nine new ministers on Friday, the Prime Minister announced his government's new cabinet on Sunday. The nine new ministers that were sworn in on Friday are Deputy Prime Minister and Member for Bulolo Sam Basil, Member for Kompiam Ambum Sir John Pundari, Member for Nuku Joe Sungi, Member for Usino Bundi Jimmy Uguro, Member for Tambul Nebilia Windaki, MP for Laigam Pogera, Tomite Kapili, Day Open member Wesley Nukuns and Samurai Murua MP Isi Henry Leonard. According to Marapedi's cabinet is based upon a minister's experience in the sector and merit. That, that is it, our full cabinet portfolio lineup for uh, 2021 uh, as we take our country into 2021. This is a collect collection of talents we have within us to ensure we mobilize a team that will not just focus on restoring and growth in 2021, but setting pace as our nation prepares for 2022 and live through into 2020s. With Bougainville still remaining as the country's greatest challenge, the Bougainville Affairs portfolio now comes directly under the Prime Minister. Uh, myself as Prime Minister will preside over the Bougainville Affairs portfolio. Uh, Bougainville remains our country's uh, great challenge, if not the greatest challenge we face in our country, but it is easy. Uh, Bougainvilleans are not stupid. In compliance to 2001 peace agreement, uh, under my leadership, we allowed for referendum to be held. And as Prime Minister and Minister of Response for Bougainville, I will go the full way in trying our very best to ensure we find a win-win solution for Bougainville and Papua New Guinea and I will still have custody over the Bougainville Affairs portfolio. The Marapeg government has stood firm on the slogan Take Back PNG, embarking on taking charge of all of PNG's resource sector. With that said, he has now put Walter Schnobelt in charge of forestry. With confidence, Schnobelt will reform the industry and ensure downstream processing. Because as we speak, timbers and forest has been harvested, planted, raped, and uh, I mean, if I could add these gross words to it, we have no detailed information to the volume of plunder that goes on in our forest sector. And it is enough, it's enough. We will be fair on our existing investors. He's been charged. I need movement into the downstream sector, ASAP. Yeah. And this is something that I will not compromise. Uh, I'm not just reformist in the mining and oil and gas sector. You can put a bullet in me, but I've spoken enough on these issues. I want reform in all our revenue sectors. Public service reforms is also a priority for this government, with Marape appointing member for Nuku Joe Sungi as the public service minister. He said with Sungi having a wealth of experience in the sector prior to becoming a MP, he wants him to take charge and ensure necessary changes. This is senior social sector portfolio. Under him, he will work very closely with uh, Governor Jufa, uh, Parliamentary Committee on Public Sector Reform. Uh, we want to reform public service to a right-sized and efficient, effective public servant. I know it's been talked about much in the past, but just because in the past it hasn't been achieved, doesn't mean we will be complacent about it going into the future. Something we want to achieve is a right-sized public servant, serving better, serving well, and a lot more public servant in our rural and, and our provincial areas. 
With Sir John Pundari taking over finance ministry, Rainbow Paita is now the Minister for National Planning and Monitoring. Brian Kramer has also been given a new portfolio as the minister responsible for justice. The police ministry is now looked after by member for Kundiawa Gambok, William Onglo. Wesley Raminai is the Higher Education and Sports Minister. Jelta Wong takes back his Health Ministry. Solan Mirisim goes back to being Defence Minister, while the former Defence Minister Saki Soloma takes up the energy portfolio. William Duma is the new State-Owned Enterprise Minister. Soro AOF, Foreign Affairs and Trade, while all the others remain the same. The Lolowata camp is now officially closed. Shamin Porayambeb National, MTV News. Prime Minister James Morape also expressed sadness at the passing of the former Prime Minister and member for Moresby Northwest. While passing on his condolences to Lady Roslyn and son James, the Prime Minister said Sir McCary was a strong supporter of the current government until his death. Amongst the former Prime Ministers, served a shortest time. But he, if not ranked, in my view, number one, then he comes closest ranked as a Prime Minister who had the greatest impact in some of the status quo of our country today. <laughs> Length of time in office is not measured by the number of infrastructures you built, but it is really reflected in the quality of interventions you make in the public policies and the reforms that you do that yields dividend and result into the future. Uh, 20 years on since he made some of these foundational and fundamental reforms, especially in our financial sector, and uh, you could see uh, results that is bearing fruit. And I just pick one case in point. Uh, BSV is a result of those reforms. Today our SOEs return lesser dividend than our indirect passive share we have in BSV that returns most, more return on investment than our direct investments in our state-owned enterprises. So we uh, pay our condolences and sympathies to Lady Roslyn, as well as uh, to son James and the family. Pay our condolences to the uh, family of our late uh, Sam McCary Morauta, one of our finest uh, former prime ministers of Papua New Guinea. I must also state here that I had a special end in elevating him to be Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, and that was in 1999. He has lived a colorful life with a great deal of contribution to the development of Papua New Guinea. May he rest in peace, and may the good Lord bless his family the people of uh, Mosby uh, Northwest. I may also say the people of Gulf and his close friends. The Governor General Grand Chief Sir Bob Dadai has also expressed his profound sadness following the passing of the former Prime Minister. In a statement from the Government House, Grand Chief Sir Bob Dadai remarked on the significant economic reforms that whilst at the time was widely protested against, did result in a stable economy and strengthened state-owned enterprise. Prior to entering politics, Sir Bob recalls that Sir McCary had an illustrious career in the finance, banking and business sectors. Using his extensive knowledge and experience in these sectors to bring about needed changes in the economy at a time when the country so desperately needed, Grand Chief Sir Bob Dadai, together with Lady Emmeline, extend their deepest condolences to Lady Roslyn and son James on this sad occasion. The funeral service for Sir McCary Morauta will be held on Wednesday in Brisbane. Lady Rosalind Morauta and son James Morauta in a statement said due to COVID-19 circumstances, it is not possible to hold a house cry. Sir McCary's funeral will be held in Brisbane at St. Mary's Anglican Church at 2 p.m. Brisbane time this Wednesday. The service will be live streamed on Facebook for family and friends to watch. Meanwhile, a memorial service will be held in Port Moresby early next year once travel circumstance 
permit and family matters are completed in Australia. Lady Roslyn has also asked that if there is an unofficial house cry, no donations will be made. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more of the day's stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Members at the Loloata camp have come up with a new approach in addressing some of the many challenges PNG is facing, known as the PNG National Restoration and Growth Commitment 2020 to 2022 and beyond. It points out some key priority areas this government needs to address. The PNG National Restoration and Growth Commitment was announced on Sunday as the Prime Minister officially announced the closure of the Loloata camp. The events that transpired in the National Parliament on the 13th and 17th of November and the 14th and 16th of December 2020 were eye-openers. Taking stock of all that has happened, leaders within the Marape government at the Loloata camp agreed to forge a plan that will establish a united and stable political reform leading up to the end of this parliamentary term in 2022 and beyond. This plan is known as the PNG National Restoration and Growth Commitment 2020 to 2022 and beyond. And basically it is an effort to put together a blueprint that will chart a new way forward for Papua New Guinea, where we can forge a better takeaway for our resource owners, where we can look at the fiscal management space and improve that area so that there is greater responsibility, greater transparency in how we make our decisions and implement those decisions. The commitment aims to address some of the most fundamental issues and had the likes of vocal parliamentary leaders such as Alan Bird and Karangakua leading the MPs with this commitment inconsistent with the slogan Take Back PNG, Leaving No Child Behind. The goal is to secure the prosperity of future generations. We have looked at how we can engage with worthy investors who come in here and respect our laws and who are willing to work with us in building our nation, our young economy, but in a way that ensures that Papua New Guinea and Papua New Guineans are the winner <coughs> in, in everything that we do in our decision making, in how we manage our economy and our resources. Among the priorities listed in the commitment paper is to continue support the agriculture sector through a decentralized approach that is based on incentives, a fairer renewable resource regime, public sector reforms and payroll realignment, ICAC implementation, the autonomous region of Bougainville, transfer of powers and consultation of referendum, among others. Under fiscal strategy, some of the commitment is on revenue focus and compliance, strengthening reforms in tax regime and administration. We look at governance, public administration and decentralization, and there is phenomenal work that will be undertaken by the Public Sector Reform Commission under the stewardship of the Prime Minister and the NEC, and Parliament indeed, where we will be reforming the public sector space, looking at the public service, the state-owned enterprises, and the disciplinary forces and national security apparatus. We have the commitment paper was handed to the Prime Minister to sign and work to begin in line with the commitment. And so our work has been managing politics and numbers as well as taking a review on what we've done in the last 18 months <clears throat> in retrospective context to uh, where our country is and how we've traveled in the last 45 years as an independent nation. The restoration and growth commitment captures the MP's confidence in the current political coalition in its restorative and reconciliatory powers in the national interest of PNG going forward. Shamin Poreambe, National MTV News. The Supreme Court today dismissed an appeal made by sitting MP for Kandep Alfred Manasse in an attempt to stop the recount of the 2017 national general election votes for Kandep. The recount was ordered by the National Court on the 4th of July 2019 in an election petition filed by former MP Don Pollier. The court ordered that reviews of the election petition are dismissed forthwith and the Electoral Commissioner shall take every step to conduct and complete the recount within one month of 
of this order. The recount shall exclude ballot papers from ballot boxes from Mamal, Mumunt 1, Lori Park, Yumbis Karikare and Peli Yanjak. The recount will be conducted outside of Enga province by counting officers who are not from Enga and who haven't been previously engaged in the 2017 national general elections. Alfred Manasse will remain the duly elected MP as this process takes place. The final results will be presented to court for final hearing as soon as the legal year opens next year. Joseph Stahl is a mission station and the headquarters of the Joseph Stahl local level government in the middle Ramu district. Its people are among Papua New Guinea's most neglected. There used to be a road connecting the station to Medang, but 30 years of government neglect has resulted in severe deterioration of the road. It is now impassable, overgrown with bush. The airstrip has been closed for years. It takes at least two whole days to get there with much of the journey done done by foot. We sent an MTV cameraman, Vinancius Wavite, to document the hardships faced by the people of Joseph Stahl. Some parts of this special report are told in his own words. The video filmed on a mobile phone. A woman making her way through dense jungle on a muddy track. A small load slung over her head and perched on top of that load. A child oblivious to the hardships his family has to go through every day. This is the reality of life for people living in Joseph Stahl in the middle Ramu district of the Medang province. The woman is traveling with the family of a health extension officer based in this remote outstation. The videos filmed on a mobile phone were sent by MTV cameraman Venancios Wavite, who traveled with them. They're expected to arrive in Joseph Stahl later tonight. Just to go to Medang Town, all need look up go transit, transit go sleep, get up, all place go, and then lucky one the PMV come come up or kind of similar color block car and go to town. But so was no guy tell have to sleep at a truck stop, let me and wait him car again. Just mothers with kids and sick. People try to go to the house, to go to the house, to go to the house, to People are dying along the way. Just Last week before the trip, we spoke to Patrick Angrai, the health extension officer from Joseph Stahl. He said very few people want to work there. It is, for the health workers and teachers, an unattractive location for those with young children. The Joseph Stahl Health Center is level 5. I'm supposed to look at 32 plus workmen, according to the National Health Service Standard. Because of the isolation belong him, or remoteness belong him, nobody wants to go there. After five hours of working, walking, I'm not able to come up long the place where people come up long the place. At least me look at garden, house line, I'm online walk about yet. I'm a Hawaii sea blow, just a style. I'm walk about on the Mrs. Flem, the family me blow about yet. Five hours. Five hours, 30 minutes, six hours now. For many outside of Medang, Joseph Stahl is a whole different reality. 30 years of neglect, the roads have deteriorated, the airstrip is closed, and for the national and provincial governments, it has long been a case of out of sight, out of mind. To get to Joseph Stahl, you have to take a six hour trip by road to a drop off point along the Ramu River. Then you have to travel by boat to another location before making a two day journey on foot. This is how the medicines, the food, the building materials are transported to this outstation. Now we carry them up we carry them house blow me. Mix them up, they come down. I'm too double expense. Come low car, fly freight team. Come down low motor, freight team. Now now we buy man, we carry them. If the road access them come through, all the Joseph Stahl, I'm helping all big time straight. Triple basic government services, health, education, road. If the road Come and tell them, Lord Joseph Stahl, I'm service by coming to the health and education. I'm not going all teachers now and tell the primary school because all two are paying my local company. They need services to be around where all local teachers are. Between 2013 and 2016, the Catholic Archdiocese took on the responsibility of rehabilitating government facilities in Joseph Stahl with assistance from Australia. They rebuilt the health facilities and tried to reopen the road. But government support has not been consistent, 
and the local level government area returned to its former state of neglect. The health and education statistics speak for themselves. Nearly every woman with a birth complication dies. And there is only one student from Joseph Stahl in university. The rest have little hope of getting any help. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of PNG and Solomon Islands today came out in a media conference highlighting their predicament of what has been going on in the political arena recently. Their disappointment was seeing Papua New Guineans descend into a political play during a time of health and economic crisis. And at Cora reports. As much as it was a disappointment to witness the political scenario that was played out in the last month or so, the bulk of PNG's population could not understand nor justify what was going on. This was the sentiments expressed by the General Secretary for the Catholic Bishop Conference today in Port Mosby. Highlighting the COVID-19 pandemic as one of the turmoils the PNG government has had to go through to implement changes in policies to mitigate the spread of the disease in the country. Believe that the PNG government has actually given a, a good response to the emergency. Uh, first of all, the government has recognized that an emergency was there, has accepted the suggestions of the international community, of the health community, of the scientific community, and so has tried to put in place what was needed and what was possible. Touching on the recent political mayhem, while there was nothing wrong with political ambitions and move by the mandated leaders, he said motivations should be strong and evident and not pretentiously debated in Parliament. It was not the time to uh, waste uh, days and weeks in, in a power struggle uh, when people were going through such difficulties, both from the point of view of threat to the health situation and the economic crisis as well. Further specifically raising a long-standing human rights issue of the 95 refugees and 42 asylum seekers brought to PNG by Australia in 2013 and are still in the country. Um, but we are extremely concerned about the last uh, bulk of probably 80 to 100 uh, people that uh, do not have any option of resettlement yet. They are prevented by the current laws to uh, settle in Australia. Um, they have been denied also, for some reasons, the US option that has been there for a few hundred of them. And um, some of them are actually, 42 of them, do not have actually a status of refugees. They have an official status of, status of asylum seekers, so they are not even entitled the proper resettlement. Uh, so this is something that we would like the governments of Australia and Papua New Guinea to, to solve this year. Despite what has transpired over the year 2020, the General Secretary says the CBC is hopeful for 2021 urging the rest of PNG to reflect on what has happened and to learn from the lessons gained, keep safe during the festive period and welcome the new year in festivity. And at Cora, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nasfund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3604 Australian dollars, 0.3858 New Zealand dollars, and 28.01 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading unchanged. Coffee and cocoa closed lower, copra closed higher. Palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. And National MTV News continues with stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the news. In regional news, teams are reporting widespread devastation in remote provinces of Fiji after Category 5 super cyclone Yasa smashed into the country. The death toll remains at four, but that's likely to rise once the full extent of the damage is known. Fijian officials surveying the damage from the land as Kiwi and Aussie troops support from the air. Villages in northern Fiji have been flattened. This is all that's left of this man's home. But alongside the devastation, miraculous survival stories are emerging. When one 4x4 four four like this came from the ceiling, it nearly killed one child. The child was just uh, sleeping small two weeks of baby. People were screaming, crying, shouting. Cyclone Yasa packed 340 kilometre an hour winds. At this school, people ran from building to building as roof after roof was torn off. The roof was lifting up, then they moved to Pimek. Then actually it happened again, then they moved to the various classrooms, up until they reached the staff room. Thousands remain in evacuation centres. Those who have returned are facing a wet clean-up, alongside no power or water supplies. Our government's sending aid as our NGOs and the United Nations is flying some in from Australia. We have uh, pre-positioned uh, items in uh, Brisbane which we are getting ready to fly out and uh, probably in the next uh, day or two we will have those supplies. Tents are already underway for the deployment of food rations, supplies and personnel to assist the affected communities. The worst affected areas are the Lao and Bua provinces, which took direct hits from Yasa. Access to villages there is proving difficult as roads and bridges have been destroyed. Fiji's government wants to get schools rebuilt within a month. have to get the buildings um, up in order or make alternative arrangements so that our students can uh, be back into classroom come 2021. For a fresh start after a year that brought Fiji two cyclones and a pandemic. And Chukai Sports is next. Kilawani is at the sports desk. Yes, Helen, we will have news on the grand final matches of the Port Moresby Rugby Football League competition and Hunter's captain, Ase Boas, urging the team to prepare for a grueling season ahead. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Good evening and welcome to Tukai Sports. Tarangao yesterday claimed 2020 Port Mosby Rugby Football League Cup after a hard-fought win over the Butterflies. Tarangao came into the final as underdogs to a more experienced Butterflies with a host of Digicel Cup experience. But that didn't stop Tarangao from taking an early lead and maintaining it until full-time coming out victors 22 points to 18. It was a packed stadium at the Oil Search National Football Stadium Oval 2. The 71st Grand Final of the Port Mosby Rugby Football League was met with great anticipation, with Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League board member Graham Osborne and the chairman Sandy Saka present to formalize proceedings. The finalists Butterflies in Green and White and Tarangao in Red and Yellow met up with the official party before the national anthem and official kickoff by Graham Osborne. This is the third time the two clubs have met in the grand final and in the previous two occasions it was Taranga who defeated Butterflies twice. Taranga had a young versatile team to begin with and were up against a tough Butterflies outfit with a host of Digicel Cup players in the mix. But things started off well for Taranga with the opening try to Steven Joshua. Taranga converted to take a 6-0 lead. Tarangao backed their performance with strong defense and in attack caused the Butterflies a lot of problems. Tarangao going in for the second try to center Jimmy Bob on the far left edge. The momentum was with the Tarangao team and it showed once more with Jimmy Bob going in for his second try. By now the scores were 14 nil. Butterflies then got their act together and managed to close in on the scoreline. A converted try to winger Isaiah Jimmy getting butterflies on the board. Yes, 
the Butterflies were playing catch-up football and it worked. Halfback Patrick Uni going over for the team second. But Taranga were determined and stretched their lead to 18 points to 12 with a try to halfback Simon Alana. By halftime, it was a six-point deficit with Butterflies trailing Tarangao 18 points to 12. The second half saw Tarangao extend their lead. This time, it was winger Alex Alungi stretching the team's lead to 22 points to 12. But the Butterflies were not done yet with a try to Isaiah James, closing the deficit to 22 points to 18. With fatigue catching up, both teams struggled to hold on to possession. And at the final, Huta Tarangao holding on to the four-point lead for the win. <laughs> Tarangao crowned champions of the 2020 POM RFL season. Fideli <laughs> Sukina. <laughs> Trukai Sports. And in the women's division of the Port Mosby Rugby Football League, the Richard Wagambi sponsored Paga Panthers women's team came out victors in the, in the division, defeating Croton South 22 points to 6 in the grand final yesterday at the National Football Stadium, Oval 2. The 2020 Port Mosby Rugby Football League Grand Final in the women's division was a showdown between favourites Richard Wagambi Paga Panthers and the Croton Souths. The official kickoff was done by current Oil Search PNG Orchids captain Elsie Albert, who was present at the Grand Final. The Paga Panthers had talent and experience across the team, with former Orchid Mala Market fullback and dynamic 5'8 Roswitha Kapo controlling the middle. The experience of Captain Janet Michael and Orchid's lock forward Janet Jones showed in their carries. For South's former Orchid Joanne Kuman added the flair, aided by rugby union convert and women's sevens international speedster Fatima Rama, they were up for the challenge. The match started off in ordinary fashion, but as the match ensued, Paga Panthers showed why they were the favourites to take out the women's title. The Paga Panthers had running and quick action, leading to their first converted try to Naomi Mondoa. <laughs> South had a few plays up their sleeves, but were not able to capitalise with points. Paga went in for their second try, this time 5-8 was with a couple scoring and converting her own try, taking a convincing 12-0 lead. But South came out of the shell and Sister Y came up with the team's first try. <laughs> Trailing 12 points to 6 heading into half time. Paga Panthers dominated in the second half with South struggling to maintain defense and to contain the speed of Paga. Speedster Malamak begging a try for herself. The lead extended to 16 points to 6. <laughs> With full time closing in, Paga Panthers second rower Leila Keroa barged over to seal the victory 22 points to 6. Paga Panthers crowned the women's champions in the 2020 Poma RFL season. In the men's under-20 division, Connie Storms managed two tries in the grand final, snatching the win 8 points to 2, with Connie Tigers only managing a penalty conversion. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. And SPPNG Hunters Championship winning captain Ase Boas is urging players who will eventually make the final team after pre-season training to prepare for a grueling season ahead. As the Hunters prepare to relocate to Queensland for the entire 2021 season, team spirit and morale will be put to the test. Kumul and SP Hunters mainstay Ase Boas is confident of making the final cut for the 2021 Intra Super Cup season. Boas has warned against complacency from senior players such as himself and others who made the squad this season before it was ultimately cancelled. No one uh, on the spot here, even the, us, the old ones here too, we're trying our best to you know, compete against the young ones to you know, make the team again for next year. So you know, nothing is easy, even though you are already in the, in the, in the, in the big squad, you, you need to fight out to make the final cut. So yeah, 
uh, the talk going around the camp is, you know, you are here now, so you need to, need to work extra hard to make the final cut. So don't, uh, don't satisfy what you have. You have to push another 1% to, you know, make the final cut, yeah. Boas, who captained the Hunters to the 2017 Queensland Cup title win, stated that the 2021 season will present itself with its own unique challenges that will take its toll on and off the field. You know, I've been under Michael Marum, Coach Marum, for since I was in the schoolboy still. You know, when I come to the Hunters, so you know, he's got his own way of coaching. Matt goes his own way, so you know, people are quickly, you know to judge him, but there is no game set to be played, only we play one game this season and then the season was cancelled, so he's got his own way of coaching and we respect that as a coach, so you know, we see how the results go next season as we go into it, but yeah, there are a lot of young boys, so yeah, they'll be fitting well into the new environment when we move down, but you know, some of, some of us are with kids and our wives around, but you know, for us, our experience that we've been experiencing out you know, abroad with the clubs out there, we're trying to encourage them that you know, we'll be going down as a group, so it's nothing to worry about. We'll be encouraging each other and support each other. So it's a new journey, a new stepping stone for us to go down there and experience the new things down there and with the environment. So hopefully we get something good out there when we are down there. Huxley Lovai, Chukai Sports. Still to come in Chukai Sports, surfing and golf. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. SPPNG Hunters recruits into the pre-season train on squad. Brandon Nima and Solomon Pokari are hopeful of capping off their impressive year with their respective Digicel Cup teams by securing a spot in the final squad for the Hunters next season. SPPNG Hunters young guns are being pushed to their limits as they aim to secure a place in coach Matthew Church's final squad for the 2021 season of the Intra Super Cup. Notable inclusions are Brendan Nima of the Gokala Hanis and Solomon Pokare of the 2020 Digital Cup champions Hello Wigman. Both players' performances throughout last season warranted the selection into the Hunters' train on squad, with the ultimate goal of feathering their playing career at a higher level of competition. Personally for me, uh, our training has been good. Uh, uh, first week uh, we came in and uh, we do a, a tough session, so uh, it's good that uh, we pushing up and stay up with the boys. Um, we push through it and we got uh, first week done, second, and now uh, the last week. So training's been good and all the boys uh, are giving the yard, uh, hard yard, so yeah, I'm looking forward for the uh, season. Next. With the added pressure and uncertainty, around the relocation of the Hunter squad to Queensland for the entire season will suddenly add to the intensity on the field. Both players are eager to learn as they develop their skills and playing techniques, not only getting feedback from the coaching staff, but also senior players in the trainer squad. When I heard that my name is in Hunter squad, oh, I thought that it's like unreal to me. I didn't believe it. But then, then I sit back and I think, oh, all my hard work has come to. I dropped out at grade 12 and I came up to Mosby to upgrade my marks. But due to the COVID-19, I stayed back at home and I tried to entertain myself and I went to the competition and I played and the coaches see, my, see the potential in me and they took me into the big man camp and they started to mold me and save me and yeah, that's where I grew up in the camp and finally I made it to the Antas camp. Haxilovai, Chukai Sports. The annual PNG Data Co. Blue Water Classics concluded yesterday in Vanimo, West Sepik Province. The tournament is part of the pathway for Vanimo surfing towards the 2022 World Surf League. The 2020 Blue Water Classics concluded yesterday in Vanimo, West Sepik Province, sponsored by PNG Data Co. The three-day competition saw local surf talent showcased in juniors, men and open women's divisions. The surf competition in Vanimo is an event organized by pioneer surfers like David Moihe and Stephen Tekwe under the banner of Surf in Vanimo. This year marks the fourth year of the competition. Participating in the competition are the best from around town, including surfers from Vanimo Surf Club, Sunset, Waromo, Yako and Shalom Surfing Clubs, respectively. In the Open Men's Division, the 2020 title has been taken by Charlie Dooney. Ryan Mana retains the Junior Cadet Division title from last year. 
And in the Open Women's Division, Sammy Wadding retains the top spot again, making this her fourth consecutive tournament title. With PNG Surfing Association set on once again bringing the world stage to Papua New Guinea for the 2022 World Surf League and World Longboard Championships, Surfing Vanimo has already set their eyes on booking their tickets to the 2022 Global Challenge of Surfers Worldwide. And that story wraps up Trukai Sports. Helen will be back with the weather report for the next 24 hours. Bye for now. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region only mostly fine weather in Port Moresby. Possible light showers tonight then fine weather in Daru. Rain showers with thunderstorms in Popandita. Mostly fine though cloudy at times in Kerama and light showers with thunder tonight. Then a fine partly cloudy day tomorrow in Alatau. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for this Monday, the 21st of December 2020. From all of us here at the newsroom, pleasant viewing, be safe and bye for now.